John Brzezink's status of greatest of all time is rarely questioned in the arm wrestling world, and probably with good reason. However, 50% of his arm wrestling potential is all but ignored when discussing his impressively extensive career. I'm talking, of course, about John Brzezink's left arm. How good was John on the left arm throughout his career? Did he ever come close to achieving the same level of dominance he did on the right? Is he also the left-handed GOAT? And if not John, who is the true left-handed greatest arm wrestler of all time? I am the Arm Historian, and all these questions and more will be answered in this video. Nearly every competitor in arm wrestling is bibrachial, meaning possessing two arms. Since it's impossible to arm wrestle opposing arms, competition is divided along the same lines. However, popularity of left arm competitions is often overshadowed by the right arm, seeing as a large majority of the population is primarily right-handed. When it comes to John Brzezink, the man can tout over 500 arm wrestling titles throughout his over 40-year career. A large majority of these seem at first glance to be on the right arm. The very first left arm title John Brzezink won was in October of 1985, when he won the left-handed lightweight category at the World Wrist Wrestling Championship in Petaluma. Throughout the rest of the 1980s, he put up two more tournament wins on the left, this time as a middleweight at the Sands International in Reno in 87 and 1988. By the end of the 1980s, well into the 90s, according to John himself, interest in left-handed competitions had all but died, and as a result, left-handed arm wrestling didn't enjoy a resurgence until later that decade, when more interest from the East had reignited the passion for the left arm. Uh, there was not really no left-handed divisions, not until the early 1990s, did, and I'm, I'm going to blame the Russians, um, there just wasn't any left-handed classes. It was kind of a, like a, a halftime show thing at a lot of the tournaments. Subsequently, John managed to win upwards of 20 titles between 1996 and 1999, some in very significant tournaments, like the Worlds in 1996, the US Nationals in 97, and then finally another three national titles in 98 when he won all three weight classes he could compete in on the left arm. Later that same year, he would even go on to win the Worlds in two left-handed weight classes. And finally, by the end of the decade, John would take the left-handed world title in the WAF Worlds in Tokyo, in the heavyweight division. The new millennium did not seem to slow the by then 36-year-old American down though. Brzezink would go on to accrue close to 50 major left-handed title wins during the next 10 years. Although, obviously, not all tournaments are created equal as far as competition goes, some notable wins include the Mike Gould Classic Heavyweight left-handed class in 2006, as well as two Ruler of the Nation wins in 07 and 08 respectively, and even a win in the Notorious Lottie Tour of 2009, proving John was still a serious contender on both arms on the international circuit. From 2010 onwards, Brzezink would manage to take the win in a little over 10 more tournaments and a couple of super matches on the left, and despite enjoying multiple retirements throughout his career, John would go on to make another comeback to the arm wrestling scene in 2022 and would go on to stay relevant in his weight class until this day, although only on the right arm, having seemingly given up entirely on getting his left arm to a competition ready form. John Brzezink has around 100 confirmed and recorded tournament and super match wins on the left arm, without including any of the smaller tournaments, the results of which have undoubtedly been lost to time. It's clear John was and is quite a formidable athlete, even on the left arm, and arguments can be made about his left arm goat status, especially if you value highly longevity and number of titles. However, public opinion seems in large part to attribute the title of best left-handed arm wrestler in history to other athletes. In a survey I conducted that involved the arm historian viewers, only 7% of you considered John Brzezink the left-handed greatest of all time, while 38% of you voted for the illustrious Travis Bajant. Bajan's status as a great left-handed puller is all but indisputable. In 2002, early on in Travis Bajan's career, it became clear he was perhaps even better on the left hand than the right, as he arguably rose to the very top of left-handed competition. Although he did have a couple of hiccups along the way, he pretty much maintained his top spot until the end of the decade. 
During the following years, Travis would compete for the left-handed title with the likes of Devin Lerat and the late great Andrei Pushkar. Although he wouldn't quite rise to the same heights he once did, it's safe to say Travis has a long and dominant resume when it comes to the left arm. If you want to learn more about Travis Bajan's career and controversies, make sure to watch my video on him after this one is finished. However, the winner of the survey by quite a margin is Denis Seplenkov, with over half of the arm historian viewers deciding the Russian juggernaut was deserving of the title. Denis of course was and still is to some degree known as a serious contender on the right, as well as the left arm. He first burst onto the arm wrestling scene in 2008, when he managed to defeat Andrei Pushkar on the left in the PAL. He would continue to rank amongst the very top of left-handed competitors for the coming decade, and consistently did well at very stacked tournaments and super matches, beating high-level left-arm pullers like Devin Larratt, Oleg Zog, and John Berzink amongst others. Unfortunately, health issues caused the Russian Siplenkov to take a substantial break from arm wrestling, and he has yet to pull a real left-handed match after his recent comeback. A select few of you have even brought forward some other candidates, like the Ukrainian Oleg Zog, a young man who already possesses quite a pedigree in the sport. Given a few years longer at the highest level, he might well have been at the top of the results, were it not for a tragic accident that hampered his physical progress, but did not manage to defeat his fighting spirit. At his peak, the young Oleg Zog took seven consecutive Nemirov wins on the left arm, an unprecedented feat. Other names that have been floating around that speak to these athletes' great potential on the left arm are, amongst others, the current East vs. West number 1, Artyom Morozov, and contender Alijan Muratov. Both gentlemen hailing from Kazakhstan have been making splashes on the tournament scene as well as the supermatch scene amongst the very best in the world. If they keep progressing at the same rate they are now, who knows what their resume of left-handed titles will look like in one or two decades. The answer to the question who is the greatest left-handed puller in history depends largely on your own personal criteria for determining what constitutes greatness. This might seem obvious at first glance, but is something that seems often forgotten during discussions of this nature. If you value, for example, strength above all, you might be inclined to point at someone like Levan Saganashvili as the greatest left-hander. On the other side of the coin, if the total number of titles is significant to you, you might look more to someone like John Brzezink to claim that title. At the end of the day, the title of greatest left-handed puller is largely arbitrary, but I do feel the term can be useful as a jumping off point for discussions on the progression of arm wrestlers and the sport as a whole. Arm wrestling is growing every day and slowly awakening from its larval stage as a niche sport into something, in my opinion, even more worthwhile and well formed. Of course, with this incredible growth also comes an ever increasing pool of athletes and potential and as a result, competition has never been fiercer. Should we therefore put more stock in the results of modern day athletes, or should we maybe look at the legendary pullers that got us to where we are now, even though they might have had a slightly easier go at climbing the ladder? In my opinion, we as a community can do both, look back at legends, marvel at modern phenoms, and maybe even gaze forward in time through our speculation. After all, the greatest left-handed puller that will ever exist is probably yet to be born, and I feel like that's something to be excited about. Thank you for watching this video, I'd be very interested in hearing your thoughts in the comments below, and as always a major shout out to the Armians and Finger folk. Arm Historian, out.